It's a bright morning. It's a bright morning. It's a bright morning. It's a bright morning. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, was salat, was salam, wa ala Sayyidil Mursaleen. Amma ba'd, fa'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim, bismillahi r-rahman r-rahim. As salat, was salam, wa alayka ya Rasulallah. As salat, was salam, wa alayka ya Habiballah. As salat, was salam, wa alayka ya Nabiyallah. Wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Nurallah. The Prophet of Mankind, the peace of our hearts, and mind the most generous and kind sallallahu alaihi wasallam is very beautifully reported to have said the one who recites durood salutation salawat salam 50 times upon me daily i will shake hands with him on the day of judgment subhanallah sallu ala al habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam salatu wa salaman alayka ya sayyidi ya habibi ya rasulullah marhaba khushamdeed welcome to one and all to another exciting and beautiful episode in silsila of this series known as a bright morning alhamdulillah 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 let's make good intentions nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned niyatul mu'mini khayrun min amali the intention of a believer is better than his action the more good intentions you make the more reward you will attain from the court of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make good intentions and inshallah 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 we will try and listen to the entire discussion from beginning to end inshallah whatever uh, whenever we hear the name of allah we will glorify and praise allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we hear the blessed name of the beloved zat of nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam we will inshallah recite the rood salutation salawat salam Upon Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when we hear the name of the awliya'i kiram, we will say rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi, rahmatullahi ta'ala alayha. And inshallah, 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 whatever we learn today, we will first and foremost try and implement it in our hearts, in our life, in our lifestyle. And then inshallah, we will try and pass the message on to others as well. We will try and motivate others. And inshallah, we will implement the teachings in our children, in, in those around us. Because remember, the more the merrier, the more good intentions you make, the more reward you will attain from the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's all up to you. Uh, it depends how much reward you want from the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, mashallah. But we all know that uh, in the beginning of the silsila, we do listen to a beautiful kalam uh, in the place of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that's how we begin our beautiful silsila. So inshallah, we will go towards the kalam now. We will listen to a beautiful kalam. And as soon as we return, inshallah, we will begin our beautiful topic of this excellent personality, the first wife of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sayyidah Khadija Al-Kubra radiyallahu ta'ala anha. Subhanallah. Sallu ala al-Habib, Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Salatu wa salaman alayka ya Sayyidi, ya Habibi, ya Rasulullah, Sallallahu ala Muhammad, al-Nuri min Nurillah. Allah, 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 Allah. Oh, 
حبیب صلی اللہ تعالی علیہ محمد صلی اللہ تعالی علیہ وسلم صلاۃ وسلام علیہ کے سید یا حبیب یا رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ محمد نور من نور اللہ مرحبا مرحبا خوش آمدید ویلکم ونس اگین بیک ٹو اور بیوٹیفل سلسلہ الحمدللہ ٹوڈے وی ار گوئنگ ٹو بی ڈسکسنگ دی گلیٹ دی بلسٹ پرسنالٹی اف سیدا خدیجۃ الکبرا رضی اللہ تعالی عنہا سبحان اللہ سیدہ خدیجۃ القبرا رضی اللہ تعالی عنہ واز بیسکلی اے بزنس وومن شی یوز ٹو ڈو ٹریڈنگ آن اے ویری لارج اینڈ ہیوج اسکیل اینڈ ایز ایوری ٹریڈر نیڈز اے ورکر ہو از ویری آنیسٹ اے ورکر ہو از ہارڈ ورکنگ اے ورکر ہو از انٹیلیجنٹ اے ورکر ہو از سینسبل اے ورکر ہو از موسٹ امپورٹنٹلی اے ورکر ہو از ٹرسٹ ورتھی سو سیدہ خدیجۃ القبرا رضی اللہ تعالی عنہ واز آلسو لکنگ فار سم ون Uh, you know who she, maybe she could send with uh, for her business deals to different cities different areas and the fame of nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam spread throughout makkah in such a way that you know nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam is a personality who has good manners he has good akhlaq uh, he is truthful he is uh, loyal he is trustworthy alhamdulillah everyone call nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam as al amin as siddiq as sadiq that he is a, the the truthful one the trustworthy one in fact people would even leave their belongings by nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam that it's not safe by us as much as it is safe by you ya rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam subhan and that time nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam didn't announce his nabuwwat and his prophethood to the people means he didn't inform the people that he is a nabi of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala subhanallah so the fame Uh, of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spread throughout Makkah that there is this, 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 young, this young man and he is so uh, you know, trustworthy, so truthful. So Sayyidah Khadija al-Kubra radiyallahu ta'ala anha, she wanted that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to take her goods with a business caravan and go to a different city. But um, she didn't know whether Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would accept her request or not. Allahu Akbar. So once... She, Sayyidah Khadija al-Kubra sent a message to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that I am aware of your truth, honesty and good character. If you accept my offer to take these goods for trade, I will pay you double of what I pay to the other people of your tribe. So, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam accepted the offer and Sayyidah Khadija al-Kubra radiyallahu ta'ala anha sent her servant Maysara with Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and she ordered him that don't disobey Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in any manner that you are going to accompany Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on this trip so alhamdulillah Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took the, the, the goods, the trades, whatever it was and he went on this business caravan, this business trip and by the virtue and the blessings of the zaad of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted so much barakah, so much profit, so much blessings in this business, in this trade which was never seen before and you know, when, when so much profit was seen so Maysara who was the slave of Sayyidah Khadijah al-Kubra radiyallahu ta'ala anha she very, he very beautifully said O oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, I have never seen so much of profit that has been earned here because of you means before this I haven't seen so much profit so after the business trade took place the buying selling everything so the caravan set off to now return home to come back to the city of Makkah al Mukarramah. During the journey, Maysara noticed that at the time of noon, when, it was, when the heat ex- increased, you must know at that time it was open deserts, no acorns, no buildings, no 
uh, houses as we have today and all of those things. No, so there's open fields everywhere. So he noticed that in the afternoon when it would get extremely hot, so two angels would give shelter to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for protection from the sun. He also noticed that sometimes you know, a cloud would come and protect the, the, the heat of the sun from the zat of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah, Allah, Allah. So when Maysara saw all of this, Allah Ta'ala put the love of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the heart of Maysara. So when the love of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came in the heart of Maysara, so Maysara started treating Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as a slave treats his master. So much adab, so much respect. It means he considered Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi as his master and he considered himself as the slave of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Subhanallah. When Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam completed the business trade and he reached Makkah al and he came to Sayyidah Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha and he informed her about the profit which he earned. So she became very happy, very pleased. And further, when she saw the profit, so much profit I have earned, so much blessing, so much barakah, Compared to all the previous years, the business was taking place, the trades were happening, caravans were going. But this year there is so much barakah. So Sayyidah Khadija gave Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and she presented him twice as much wages than she decided to pay Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So what she decided to pay, I'll pay you this much, she paid double that, twice than that because of the honesty and the and, and the the loyalty of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Alhamdulillah the blessings and the barakah and the profit in the trade and in the business. Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah. But yes, my brothers, here we come to learn a very beautiful sunnah of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I would say. At the same time, a very good action which every person needs to develop in his life, in his lifestyle. And what is that? That is to be honest, to be trustworthy, to be loyal. Unfortunately, in today's time, we, we do business, we Muslims, we do business, we have trade, we maybe have a shop, we have workers and us, we are working for someone, whatever the case is. In today's time, this loyalty, this trustworthy, this trust, you won't find it in today's time. Every person is, it's as if every person has taken out that I will deceive the next person, I will cheat the next person, I will hurt the next person, I will harm the next person. And today on the name of business, so many filthy things people are doing across the globe that it's something which cannot be comprehended, which cannot be understood. Just for some profit, maybe little profit, little extra money, a person will lie, a person will deceive, a person will make sure, you know, the next person's things shouldn't get sold, my things should get sold. A person will do every sort of wrong thing. Muslim brother will make sure he's destroying the business of his Muslim brother just to make his business prosper. I said this is not the teachings of Allah and his beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My Nabi sallallahu also did business, but he did the business with loyalty, with, with full, you know, trust, full, um, alhamdulillah, there was no cheating, there was no deceiving, there was no deception. And the blessings of that was Allah Ta'ala granted lots of barakah. Because indeed when a person obeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he's not going to go against the teachings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah Ta'ala is the, is, is, is the razaq. He is the one who gives you the risk. So when he sees that you are you are earning this risk in a proper and you know lawful way, you are not doing anything wrong, you are not doing anything you know against Sharia, you are not deceiving anyone, you're not troubling your Muslim brothers, then Allah Ta'ala will give you more barakah. On the other hand, you know, a person deceives someone and he gets a little bit money, maybe you'll get extra, few thousand rands extra, whatever the case is, but there won't be barakah in that money. Why? Because you earned it by a wrong means, by a means in which you hurt somebody, you harm somebody, and that Allah Ta'ala does not like. So the best option will be earn little, but do it properly, and inshallah there will be barakah in that. Compared to when you earn you know, a big amount by deceiving or hurting someone, by Allah there won't be any barakah in that. Because very, very, very beautifully, it is mentioned in a beautiful hadith that undoubtedly the most purified earning is of those traders who do not tell a lie when they speak, do not act deceitfully when they are entrusted with something, do not break a promise when they make it. Likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in twin, verse 27 of Surah Anfal, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu, la takhunu allaha war rasoola wa takhunu amanatikum wa antum ta'alamoon. Translation from Ganzul Iman, people who believe, do not betray Allah and His noble messenger, nor purposely defraud your trusts. The Quran is giving the hukum 
to you know not not to lose your trust not to break your trust there is an aman that you take care of it someone gave you something you take care of it so these two qualities we need to keep in our mind and we need to keep it especially when we're doing business number one we're not going to cheat we're not going to lie we're not going to deceive anyone and number two we are going to be trustworthy if somebody gives us something somebody trusts us with something then we're going to make sure we take care of it and we're not going to tarnish the reputation of the next person we're not going to break his trust in us inshallah 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 subhanallah alhamdulillah we will carry on the discussion of sayyida khadija al kubra radiyallahu ta'ala anha uh, but before that let's quickly listen to a few madani pearls inshallah uh, we we'll listen to this package and as soon as we return inshallah we will be carrying on our discussion for today regarding this beautiful personality of islam sayyida khadija al kubra radiyallahu ta'ala anha sallu ala al habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam The name of Sayyidatuna Khadija radiyallahu ta'ala anha is Khadija. Her father's name was Khuwailid and her mother's name was Fatima. The kunya of Sayyidatuna Khadija radiyallahu ta'ala anha is Ummul Qasim and Ummi Hind. She radiyallahu ta'ala anha was born 15 years before the year of the elephants. Her title are Tahira, Sayyida, Siddiqa and Kubra. Her final title Kubra is mentioned so often alongside her name that it is like a part of her name. She radiyallahu ta'ala anha was the first to accept Islam from amongst the women. Subhanallah azza wa jalla. She radiyallahu ta'ala anha was amongst the noble tribes of the Arabs. That is the Quraysh. She radiyallahu ta'ala anha is the mother of the queen of paradise. Sayyidatuna Fatima az-Zahra radiyallahu ta'ala anha and the grandmother of the leaders of the youth of paradise, Imam Hasan and Imam Hussain radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma. She radiyallahu ta'ala anha sacrificed all her wealth at the feet of the beloved Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and spent her entire life serving the beloved Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Their blessed nikah took place two months and 25 days after the beloved Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam returned from his journey to Syria. She radiyallahu ta'ala anha was 40 years old at the time of her marriage to the beloved prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam whereas the beloved prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam was 25 years old at that time the beloved prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam did not marry anyone else during her lifetime she radiyallahu ta'ala anha remained the life partner of the beloved rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam for around 25 years subhanallah she radiyallahu ta'ala anha passed away in the 10th year after the announcement of prophethood in the month of ramadan she radiyallahu ta'ala anha passed away at the age of 65 she radiyallahu ta'ala anha is resting in jannatul ma'ala which is in makkah sallu ala al habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam sallu ala al habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam salatu wa salam alayka ya sayyidi ya habibi ya rasulullah welcome back mashallah to our beautiful silsila alhamdulillah we were discussing regarding amanat and not doing khayanat in the amanat not breaking the trust of someone and alhamdulillah this is the teaching of allah and his beloved rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as well as one of the most beautiful sunnats of nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam subhanallah subhanallah alhamdulillah sayyida khadija al kubra radiyallahu ta'ala anha is the first woman to accept islam this is one of her beautiful and excellent attribute and quality subhanallah she radiyallahu ta'ala anha had the privilege of becoming the first wife of nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam allah azza wa jalla sent salam to her through sayyidina jibril alayhi salam she had the privilege of spending almost approximately 25 years in the blessed company of nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam subhanallah and by allah she set a perfect example you know of of companionship of support of moral support of uh, physical support of uh, mental support i would say and alhamdulillah she was you know a very excellent companion of nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam and she set an example that this is how a woman should be towards a husband this is how a wife should be towards a husband this is how a couple should remain subhanallah subhanallah she radiyallahu ta'ala anha presented all her wealth to the beloved prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam means she she alhamdulillah spent the wealth for the upliftment of the deen of allah and his beloved rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam 
the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself was in her blessed grave and lowered her into the grave with his own merciful and blessed hands. Subhanallah. In history, she is remembered by the title of Tahira and Siddiqa. She radiallahu ta'ala anha is the most beloved wife of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Subhanallah. And she was also given the glad tidings, the good news of being blessed with a palace free of noise in Jannah and in paradise. Subhanallah. Alhamdulillah. A brief introduction of Sayyidah Khadija I would like to mention now. Her name is Khadija. Her father's name is Khuwailid and her mother's name is Fatima. Regarding her lineage, she radiallahu ta'ala anha had the honor that her lineage connects with the blessed lineage of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with fewer relations than the other blessed wives. In other words, she is related to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam closer than all the other blessed wives in, term of the, in terms of the lineage and the, and, and the chain of generations. Subhanallah. Her appellation is Umm al-Qasim and Umm hind She radiallahu ta'ala anha has many titles and some of them are, the most famous is Al-Kubra. This was so frequently used that it seemed as if it had become a part of her name. Another famous title is Tahira. And she used to be called Tahira, the one who is pure, the one who is pak, the one who is clean. Subhanallah. She used to be called Tahira even in the pre-Islamic era of ignorance. She was still called Tahira. Subhanallah. Furthermore, she radiallahu ta'ala anha was also called Sayyidatu Quraysh. Because she was one of the, of, I would say, one of the leading women in Quraysh. And in Mecca, alhamdulillah, she had a respect, she had a status, she had a maqam, alhamdulillah. Similarly, her Siddiqa is also a title. It has been narrated that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned and said, Hadihi Siddiqatu Ummati, she is the Siddiqa of my Ummat. Subhanallah, subhanallah, alhamdulillah. This is the beautiful zat of Sayyidah Khadijah al-Kubra radiallahu ta'ala anha in a very beautiful hadith. In Bukhari Sharif, and I personally love this hadith so much, alhamdulillah, that uh, I like to mention it. That um, Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala who has narrated that once Sayyidina Jibreel Amin, Sayyidina Jibreel, the leader of the angel, Sayyidul Malaika, he came to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and humbly requested, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Khadija is approaching. She radiallahu ta'ala anha has a pot of food. When she approaches you, then convey to her the salam of your Rabb and mine. Give her the glad tidings and the good news of a home made of a case like pearl in paradise that has neither any noise nor any other inconvenience. Allah, Allah, Allah. Then give Sayyidah Khadija al-Kubra the salam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my salam and your salam, O beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Subhanallah. When Sayyidah Khadija al-Kubra radiallahu ta'ala heard us, then in reply she replied and she said, Inna Allah Huwa salamu wa ala Jibreel as salamu wa alayka as salamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. She mentioned and she said, Allah Azza wa Jal is salam. And peace be upon Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam and the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Mercy and blessings be upon them. Subhanallah, subhanallah. Very beautifully, Allah has mentioned and he says, Ma dare awwaleen ahla imanaki. Subhanallah, hai ye uski buzurgi wa paaki zgi bar guzida hai rabbe muhammad ki bhi arsh se jis pe taslim nazil hui us saray salamat bilak ho salam Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah From this we also come to know about the wisdom of Sayyida Khadijat al-Kubra radiyallahu ta'ala anha because when she replied to the salam she said, you know for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala she mentioned who was salam she didn't reply and say, alayhi salam, salam upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, no, no. Why? Because when you say, when you make salam to somebody and you reply, wa alaykum salam so you are saying, may the peace of, may the peace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon you. May the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon you. So you're giving dua to that person. So she knew, I can't reply and say, wa alayhi salam, may the peace be upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, 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 no. That's why I look at her beautiful way of replying. She said, Huwa salam. He is salam. Because salam is one of the beautiful names and one of the beautiful uh, names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is how she replied that he is salam. And then she said, you know, alayka salam upon Jibreel salam and upon Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So she replied to the salam of Sayyidina Jibreel salam and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by mentioning alayka salam. But for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
very beautifully she said you know who was salam that he is salam subhanallah this is the beautiful wisdom and the understanding of sayyida khadija al kubra radiyallahu ta'ala anha allah 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 from this a very beautiful uh, masala we would also come to know that you know if someone conveys another person salam to you it happens many a time you know you meet someone and the person says are jab usse milo to fir salam arz kar dena if you remember you know if you meet so and so person then give him my salams so you came to this person you said uh, you know hazrat so and so person send salam to you so how to reply to this salam many people say oh, wa alaikum assalam many people say oh, assalamu alaikum if someone comes and conveys the salam of someone else to you then first you must make dua of peace for the one who is conveying the salam and then to the one who sent the salam so how is that someone comes and says you know so and so made salam to you so you say alayka wa alayhi salam upon you and upon him salam so you're not going to say assalamu alaikum or wa alaikum assalam or anything you first reply to the person who came and conveyed the salam and then you reply to the one who made the salam who sent the salam so alayka wa alayhi salam this is the proper way of replying to the salam of someone when someone conveys his salam towards you subhanallah alhamdulillah this is also one of the beauties of sayyida khadijah al kubra radiyallahu ta'ala anha that we are learning alhamdulillah uh, some beautiful masail and some beautiful laws of how to convey the salam and this is something which is very important in today's time everyone many a times it happens that you know we convey the salam to each other so we should know how to reply to the salam subhanallah subhanallah this is the beautiful zat of sayyida khadijah al kubra radiyallahu ta'ala anha and this is qualities her attributes this is her station in maqam that even allah subhanahu wa ta'ala subhanallah sent salam to sayyida khadijah al kubra radiyallahu ta'ala anha remember sayyida khadijah al kubra radiyallahu ta'ala anha is that personality that every moment she supported Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam she stayed with Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam and there was full support from her side towards Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam remember when Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam first received the wahi in the cave of Hira from Jibril alayhi salam and at that time it it was something which happened you know for the first time so the blessed body of Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam was shivering and it was something new to nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam so when nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam went to sayyida khadijah al kubra radiyallahu ta'ala anha she consoled him she told him that you know you are such an excellent personality you have this qualities you have that qualities you have this beautiful qualities you have the elderly people you take care of others you are trustworthy you are truthful and she supported him and alhamdulillah when nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam preached about islam then she was the first one to accept islam whenever there was any difficulty she was there you know financially she'll support uh, uh, mentally she'll support physically she'll support morally she'll support and alhamdulillah her entire life which she spent with nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam when nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to go and worship in the cave of hira then she would pack the provisions you know food water drinks whatever it was for nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam when we look at the life of sayyida khadija tul kubra radiyallahu ta'ala an hadd we say this is how a perfect wife should be this is the perfect role model for a wife if you want your wife to become you know a, a good person who who obeys husband who look after husband who looks look after her children or whatever then i say then i would say the best thing which you should do is you should read the lifestyle of sayyida khadijah al kubra radiyallahu ta'ala anha because she displayed and she portrayed this beautiful and excellent character of hers that this is the the way and the behavior a wife should have towards a husband this is one of the reasons why a person makes nikah why he gets married he has he, he brings a companion he brings the wife why because she must be his support i mean that's what the, the 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 main purpose of nikah is that the husband supports the wife the wife supports the husband and it plays a very big role when you have a a, a companion with you when you have a sati when you have someone with you yes there are many things you know which which a person discuss with his parents there are many things a person discusses with his siblings with his children at the same time there are many things a person discusses with his partner with his wife with with the husband a man with his wife and a woman with a husband and so every every relation has their own basically um, you know their own standards and the relation between the husband and wife is something very unique very special and to keep that special relation running and moving and going there has to be you know a balance from both sides from the husband's side and from the wife's side and so from the wife's side i would say if anyone wants to 
perfectly know, you know, how to really treat the husband, how to respect the husband, how to have the love for the husband, how to obey the husband. Then the blessed Zat of Sayyidah Khadija is the perfect example in front of us. And if somebody wants to see what a husband should do, then the role model is none other than our beloved and most noble Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The moment every husband and wife can follow in the footsteps of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Sayyidah Khadija Al-Kubra Radiallahu Ta'ala Anha, by Allah, that house will become you know, a garden of Jannah. The house will become full of barakah, full of blessings, and full of beauty. These problems, fight, facade, issues, quarrels, arguments, and everything, all of these things will slowly, slowly move away. Yes, they are human beings. You know, wherever human beings are, wherever one, two, sometimes you do have some, you know, ifs, maybes, buts, no's, those things do happen. But keep these personalities, lifestyle in front of you. By Allah, inshallah, you will see that your, your house will inshallah become a madani mahal and a madani environment will start developing in your house, in your life, in your lifestyle inshallah, inshallah, inshallah. So this is the quality of Sayyidah Khadija, the taking care of the husband, giving him food when he leaves. And so this woman can also do, husband is leaving for work, pack some food for him. You know, when he comes back, ask him, did he eat, did he do this, did he, is, is, he, is he fine, does he need some water? Always support him. Sometimes the husband is worried. The husband goes through difficulties, financial problems, family problems, whatever it is. You know, wife supports him. You know, she speaks to him. She consoles him. She helps him. Right? So all these kind of things you need to keep in mind. Likewise, on the other hand, huh? the wife is sometimes troubled. The husband goes to her, speaks to her, asks her what's happening. You know, um, removes the difficulty, supports her, takes care of her. When she needs anything, he provides. So both sides, when it is balanced, you will see, inshallah. Abundance of barakah, alhamdulillah. This is the things we learned from the beautiful zat of Sayyidah Khadijat al-Kubra radiallahu ta'ala anha. Then inshallah we'll move towards our package and we'll listen to some few beautiful madani pearls. And then inshallah we'll come towards the conclusion of today's silsila. Subhanallah. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has given some emphasis on women not to be ungrateful to their husbands. Because we are speaking about this relation between husband and wife, this is something which is very important and needs to be discussed. Sayyidah Asma radiallahu ta'ala anha has said that once Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed by us. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made salam to us and said, avoid being ungrateful to those who do favors. We humbly asked, what does being ungrateful to those who do favors mean? He replied, it was possible that any woman amongst you could have been without a husband for a long time and she remains with her parents and becomes old. But Allah Azawajal grants her a husband and blesses her with wealth and children through him. Despite this, when she gets angry, she says, I have never seen any good from him. So Nabi Sallallahu warned the woman and told them, you know, stop being ungrateful to, towards your husband. Don't do this now, shukri towards your husband. No, be grateful to them, thank them. Yes, whenever there are problems and that ups and downs do happen, but it doesn't mean you must forget all the favors he has done upon you, all the ihsanat he has done upon you, all the support he has given you subhanallah so this is the the beautiful teaching of islam the teaching of allah and his beloved rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam let's quickly move towards our final package and inshallah as soon as we return we will then inshallah uh, wrap up and round off our silsila episode for today inshallah after this beautiful package sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. My dear viewers of Madani channel, Sayyidina Khadijatul Kubra radiallahu ta'ala anha. She was the first wife of the beloved Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. She radiallahu ta'ala anha chose to become the wife of the beloved Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam upon witnessing the exemplary and the lofty character of the beloved Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Sayyidina Khadijat al-Kubra radiallahu ta'ala anha was a pillar of support for Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam during the initial phases of Islam. Recognizing her sacrifices, the beloved Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said to Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, By Allah, I have not had a better wife then Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha. She radiallahu ta'ala anha believed in me when others did not. And she radiallahu ta'ala anha accepted me as a prophet when others rejected me. When nobody was prepared to give me anything, Khadija gave me her wealth 
and Allah Almighty granted me children through her. Allahu Akbar. My dear viewers of Madani channel, upon receiving the first revelation, the beloved Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wa Wasallam was overwhelmed by power of divine word descending into his heart. The beloved Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wa Wasallam related the astonishing event to Sayyidina Khadija Radiallahu Ta'ala Anha, saying, I fear for my life, to which she immediately replied with utter conviction, I swear by Allah Azza wa Jal, He Almighty will never dishonor you. You display the best conduct to your relatives. You carry the burden of others yourself. You distribute your wealth amongst the needy. You honor guests and you help others. Our mother, Umm al Mu'mineen, Sayyiduna Khadija al Kubra, radiallahu ta'ala anha, exerted herself for the glory of Islam and the happiness of our beloved Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. The beloved Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam honored this and reciprocated with immense love and always remembered her after she passed away. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevate her status and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us without accountability through her sadaqah. My dear viewers of Madani channel, her character and her life meaning the life of Sayyidina Khatija al-Kubra radiallahu ta'ala anha is an example for all the sisters, for all the women of Islam. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Salatu wa salaman alayka ya Sayyidi ya Habibi ya Rasulullah sallallahu ala Muhammad nuri min nurillah. Marhaba. Welcome back to our beautiful episode in Silsila. And uh, the beautiful uh, daughters and the sons of Nabi are from Sayyida Khadijat al Kubra, radiallahu ta'ala anha, uh, Sayyida Fatima al Zahra, Sayyida Ruqiyya, Sayyida Umm Kulthum, Sayyida Zainab, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in, the four beloved and blessed daughters of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, subhanallah. Likewise, Sayyidina Abdullah, Sayyidina Qasim, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, and the beloved sons of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah, uh, they, all these children are from. Uh, Sayyida Khadijat al Kubra radiallahu ta'ala anha and alhamdulillah uh, until today we can see the blessings of Sayyida Fatima al Zahra and the shan of uh, the Sadat and the Sayyids across the globe alhamdulillah subhanallah so all the credit that goes to her, her beloved mother which is Sayyida Khadijat al Kubra radiallahu ta'ala anha alhamdulillah uh, we have unfortunately reached the conclusion of today's silsila let's uh, all take a very beautiful message away from today's episode in silsila that the life of Sayyida Khadija al Kubra radiallahu ta'ala anha is a perfect role model, especially for the women folk. That if anyone wants to know how to respect, how to honor his her husband, then look at the life of Sayyidah Khadija and inshallah Zawajal, you will find your answer. Subhanallah. Remember, instill the love of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa in your hearts and your mind. This love of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa is the base of your iman, the base of everything. If you have this love, you have everything. You lose this love by Allah, you lose everything we hope to see you soon inshallah with a different exciting beautiful topic till then uh, remain happy be positive think positive stay positive remain positive may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of you abundance of barakah abundance of happiness sallu ala al habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam it's a bright morning it's a bright morning it's a bright morning it's a bright morning it's a bright